Before we add the Create, Update, and Delete actions to our controllers, we need to learn about using forms in Rails. We will introduce the basics now and then take a deeper dive into forms in a later chapter. We will use several Rails helper methods to help us to write the HTML for our forms. There are two key points to keep in mind while using these helper methods. First, anything that we can write with the helpers can also be written with simple HTML. That's all the helpers are doing. They're helping us to write HTML. The end result that goes back to the browser is always just plain HTML. Let's don't forget that. Second, writing code using these helpers is almost always easier, more powerful, and includes extra benefits than if we use simple HTML alone. The following examples will make some of those advantages clear. Let's first look at a standard HTML form. Inside the HTML form tags, there are three text input fields for name, position, and visible, followed by a submit button labeled create subject. The form's action attribute has a value of slash subjects slash create. That's the URL where the form will submit its data. Rails routing will send that URL request to the subjects controller and to the create action. Notice that the method on the form is post. That's different from clicking a link or typing a URL. Links are get requests, forms are post requests. When we submit the form to the create action, Rails will have the values for these form fields in the post parameters. Post parameters are accessed the same way as get parameters. We just say params name, params position, params visible, just like we did for params ID. If we want to use those parameters to construct a new subject, we could put each one into a hash and then pass them in to subject new. This is the simplest way to work with forms in Rails, but there are a number of improvements that we can make. The first improvement is that it's tedious to build this hash by grabbing each parameter by name. Imagine if we had a form that had 40 fields. There's a better way to do it by using form arrays. Keep in mind that this is still part of basic HTML, not Rails. In this HTML form, notice the name value has changed. Where before we had name equals name, now we have name equals subject, and then in square brackets, name. This syntax submits the form values grouped together in an array named subject. It's a form array. When the form is submitted, the controller will still have access to them, but as a hash for the subject parameter, params subject. This is an improvement because now we can create a new subject by passing in the whole subject hash to subject.new. We no longer have to build the hash ourselves using every single attribute. The form does it for us. So far, this has just been HTML, no Rails code. Let's go back to the nested parameters version of our form again. I'm going to show you a version that uses the Rails helper methods next. Remember, you can scrub back and forth in the video to compare the two. We will use the Rails form tag helper. The form tag helper expects the form action as an argument. Just like with links, we can use a hash and the helper will generate the correct URL based on the routes file. Next, we have a code block. Everything from do down to end is part of the form. Inside the block, I use a few more helper methods. The text field tag helper outputs HTML for a text field. We just provide the field name as an argument. Notice that I'm using the same name as before, subject, and then in square brackets, name. The submit tag is much simpler than the HTML version. I have a hard time remembering the submit tag syntax. With the helper, we just provide the text for the button and Rails handles the rest. With this form, we saved ourselves a lot of typing and we wrote code in a Ruby style. Like the two previous forms, this form will work in Rails. However, there's another improvement that we can make to it. The text field tag helper, as shown, will output HTML for subject name, but without a value. We can provide a value for it by passing it in as a second argument after the field name. However, it's up to us to get those values out of the params and pass them in to the text field tag. Sometimes that's necessary, but can also be tedious. If we're working with an object, we can use an object aware form helper instead. So I'm still using my form tag helper, but inside the form I'm using text field. It has a similar name, but without underscore tag at the end. The text field helper allows us to specify our object name followed by the attribute name. It uses those names to construct the same tag name, but it will look for an object named subject, and if it's found, it will use the object's name attribute for the current value of the text field. We don't have to provide it, it will find it for us from that subject object. Rails continues to make working with forms easier, but there's one more improvement we can make, which is mostly a matter of style, it's a sort of shorthand. Notice that every text field is being sent the subject symbol as its first argument. It gets specified over and over and over. So the name of it is different instead of form for its form tag. Notice the URL is also declared a little bit differently when we use form for. 
The first argument is our subject symbol. The second argument is a hash of form options, one of which is the URL. So inside the code block, it's saying, based off of the subject, create a text field for name. Based off of the subject, create a text field for position. Based off of the subject, create a text field for visible. We're not repeating ourselves as much, and it's clear that this whole form is for the subject object. Each version of writing forms that we've seen will absolutely work in Rails. And there will be times when form tags will fit your needs better than form 4. Or you might use form 4, but still use a text field tag as a field that's not for the form's object. There might even be times you want to skip the Rails helpers and write straight HTML. Whenever possible, I think it's preferable to try to use the more advanced versions than the more primitive versions. We will stick with Form 4 as much as possible in this tutorial. I think we now have a fundamental grasp of forms and how Rails can help you to write them. Let's see how we use forms as we implement the create part of CRUD in our controllers.